Hi, uh, a few months back I received a message from one of you asking me to make a food vlog in Portugal which considering that I'm Portuguese and I go back quite frequently it's a little embarrassing that I still didn't have a Portugal food vlog on the channel but I went to visit my family over the holidays and I thought that was going to be the perfect opportunity to show you not only the traditional foods but also what we eat on our day-to-day -day and what we eat over the holidays. I also had the opportunity to do a couple of day trips with family to other cities outside of Lisbon that maybe some of you haven't heard of. So yeah, I'm really excited to share the traditional foods. I'm so sure that I'm not able to show not even half, not even a third of the traditional foods that we have in the country, but it's a nice good first glimpse. But yeah, on to the video. So starting with my first morning being yanked from bed before 8 in the morning, I grabbed a quick slice of bread with marmalada, which I literally just found out in English is called quince marmalade. It's a classic in Portugal and I downed it with a black coffee before going off on one of the longest days I had recently. Every two weeks my dad comes to the farmer's market and buys an impressive quantity of fruits and vegetables. From oranges to three different types of apples and greens, I don't think my dad can conceive a reality in which his house isn't properly stocked up with fruits and vegetables. Today especially we were shopping for the Christmas meals, obviously last minute as that's the Portuguese way of course. Then we hit the supermarket. I wanted to show you a few things we have which are different from other countries. We have huge fish and shellfish sections and of course a section just for dry salted cod. Here's the cod fritter section, the fruit section and the wine section with some of the lowest wine prices you've likely ever seen. Then we have the bakery section with all our traditional sweets, ultra cheap pastéis de nata and the best bread that, as you'll see, I can happily eat every single day without getting tired. Then we have lots of traditional sweets and cakes, which are basically all made with sugar and eggs. That's the Portuguese way. We bought a few pastries as we still had a couple of hours to go before lunch and then we went home to put the groceries away. And I spent some time with my dog. I can't even explain how much I love this cutie patootie. Then my mom had her company's Christmas lunch and my dad and I were invited, so we joined her. In Portugal, the most common way to start a meal is with a soup and some bread with butter or cheese. I also had a classic fish risol and that was pretty tasty, of course. My dad had some muelas, which is basically stewed chicken gizzard and very traditional here. Then there were a few different dishes that they served, all of them traditional. There was duck rice, pork and clams, oven baked cod with a cornbread crust and bacalhau con natas, which is a baked dish made with salted cod and cream and everyone loves it. It's one of my favorites and that's what I had and so did my dad. The dessert table was stocked up too. There was a Christmas Yule log, which is pretty popular, and a bolche, which is the most popular Christmas cake. It has lots of raisins and candied fruit and I actually don't like it at all. <laughs> My dad went for the caramel egg pudding and I got a slice of Molotov cake, which is basically egg whites, sugar and caramel. It's delicious. And my dad went back for a fruit salad and obviously no meal in Portugal ever ends without an espresso to round things up. From here we still had other plans, so we drove to pick up Dan from his house and visit the Christmas village in the medieval town of Obidush. There were lots of street stalls selling all kinds of traditional sweets and roasted chestnuts. The Christmas village was wizardry school themed, which we all know that means it's Harry Potter themed, but I guess they aren't officially licensed to say that. And then Dan asked me if I wanted to go for a couple drinks with a few of our local friends. I was pretty full, so I just had a slice of cake that my dad bought and a cup of coffee. A little Portuguese girl dinner, if you will. And then I actually forgot to film what I had while we were out, but it was a summer's b-sider. Other people had coffee or beer. And that was a busy day. <laughs> Second day and we're starting the day with some holy bread and butter. Mimosa butter is literally my favorite, only up there with some butter from the Azores and there are no arguments allowed on that. I pair this with some barley coffee and call it the breakfast of champions. 
In Portugal, the evening of the 24th is the main Christmas gathering, so there was no time for fancy meals for lunch. My dad boiled some fish with veggies and egg, and we had that with a good drizzle of olive oil. I know what some of you are thinking, ew, boring bland food. Well, this is very common here since we are next to the sea and we are very lucky to have good quality veggies and olive oil. My dad will genuinely eat this for most days of the week for dinner. I suppose it's the healthier side of our traditional cuisine. This is my mom preparing a separate meal, chicken scallops with mushrooms and cream, which is also a very popular casual dish of ours. Then the afternoon was mostly spent preparing the Christmas dinner. I decided to make some baked camembert for an entree. Not that it's traditional Portuguese, because it's not, but your girl wanted some camembert cheese, and so I made some camembert cheese. <laughs> In the meantime, some family members stopped by, so this took way longer than it was supposed to, but that's the magic of Christmas, right? <laughs> This was my parents starting to cook the codfish in milk, so it's nice and soft. Then my mom started frying the onions, which I'm intolerant to, but try telling that to any Portuguese mom cooking Christmas dinner and tell me how that goes. In Portugal, the most traditional Christmas meal is codfish. We like to say that we have a thousand different ways to cook codfish, and I never counted, but I think it's true. This dish is called bacalhau azé do pipo, which doesn't really have a meaningful translation. It's just a type of codfish dish we do. I know this will look messy. I wanted to remove the bones from the fish, but my dad told me off and I decided decided not to argue on that. This is my mom making the mayonnaise for the dish. It's super yummy after it bakes in the oven. Then we made the mashed potatoes. Everyone is trying to do everything at once and arguing as it is common in any Southern European household. So you're welcome that I'm keeping the audio muted. <laughs> Then my dad poured the mashed potatoes around the fish. I told my dad that he needed to leave some room for the rest of the ingredients, but he disagreed with me. And again, I decided not to argue. <laughs> then we added the fried onions. If you think there's too much olive oil in this, no, there isn't. We add the mustard and then in theory, you would cover it with the remainder of the mashed potatoes. But oh yeah, my dad already had poured all of it against my advice. So now he's trying to spawn some mashed potatoes out of nowhere to cover everything up. Anyway, the chaos continues. The dish is decorated with some black olives as per the tradition and it goes in the oven to stop looking so pale. Usually Portuguese Christmas is a big celebration with as many family members as possible, but for a few reasons this year, it was just the four of us at home. I like it better when it's more people, but hey, Christmas is not the only time of the year to celebrate and be with family. Et voila, the starters before the feast, there's always some shrimp, cheese, chorizo, olives, that's the baked camembert that I made, then the toasty codfish dish, my dad got to it before I could start filming. It's really good, some other families may do it a bit differently, but this is just how my mom likes to make it. And then the desserts, which we'll have leftovers of for days. My dad really wanted the caramel pudding, so we made one. And then I made a little sweet with cream and condensed milk with strawberries and biscuits, but I think it hadn't had enough time to set in the fridge by now, so it's a bit runny, but it was delicious and that's what matters. My dad also bought a couple pre-made cakes, but at this point, I agree, it was too much. <laughs> In Portugal, we exchange gifts at midnight on the 24th, so my mom always gives me and my brother a box of Ferrero Rocher <laughs> chocolates, which became, I guess, a little tradition in our family. All right, Christmas morning, I have the usual breakfast of champions while watching the Circus of Monte Carlo, which always airs on Christmas Day. My mom started making lunch and she cooked rabbit, which is common in Portugal, but very much a special occasion dish. For the starters, we fried some risois, which are fritters, and croquetes, which is a staple in every Portuguese household. Some of these are made with codfish, others with shrimp, and others with meat. Obviously, our delicious cheese and bread are always part of the equation as well. We actually owned a pet rabbit many years ago, which traumatized me into never eating rabbit again, even before I decided to go pescatarian. <laughs> so I had some of the codfish from the night before.
My dessert didn't exactly firm up as it should, but it was still delicious and I decided to bring it to Dan's parents' house along with the Christmas presents. I actually forgot to film most of the afternoon, but we had a very chill day. We just watched Harry Potter films and for dinner I had some baked codfish with roasted potatoes that Dan's parents had made for Christmas lunch. Now new day, same breakfast, <laughs> because I just love delicious bread and butter, what can I say? Today Dan's family had organized a day trip, so I'm actually going to show you some parts of our country which aren't in Lisbon. Then grabbed the pampillo for the way, which is this pastry filled with egg custards and that most Portuguese people absolutely love. Then we stopped for lunch in the city of Aveiro, which people call the Venice of Portugal. I really like it here, it's so pretty. My main dish for lunch was the octopus, it's called polvo alagareiro and it's one of my most favorite dishes. I love octopus and almost always have it when I'm back in Portugal. After lunch, we walked around and stopped at the shop to buy the famous desserts from the city of Aveiro, which are these decadent sweets filled with an egg yolk and sugar mixture. They're called ovos moles, meaning soft eggs. Afterwards, we passed by this super picturesque coastal village called Costa Nova, and we caught the most beautiful sunset at the beach. Just look at that. Finally, we drove to the city of Agda because they claim to have the world's largest Santa Claus. <laughs> I was pretty skeptical, but at 21 meters tall, it is apparently in the Guinness World Records. So there you have it. The city streets were all lit up with their iconic umbrellas everywhere and it looked really pretty. Obviously, we had to stop to get a shuho. <laughs> oh my god, I can't resist a Kinder Bueno feeling. Are you kidding me? Delicious. Are we even surprised at this point? <laughs> yes, I'm having buttered bread and coffee again. It's a classic and I'm not sorry. <laughs> Today was a very chill day, just spent at home playing with our dog. Do you understand how much I love this little fur ball? He looks like a baby, but he's already 13 years old. I'm going to be absolutely devastated when he dies. <laughs> he's like my second brother. His name is Pucci, like Gucci, but with a P. And yes, my mom named him. <laughs> This was me trying to edit my Belgium vlog, but I didn't really get very far with it this day. Uh, for Lent, let me show you some of the Portuguese resourcefulness in action. So there was leftover rabbit meat from Christmas Day, so my mom turned it into a rabbit rice. I actually had some of the leftover cod fritters with rice because I wasn't really bothered to cook either. My mom had baked some apples and I personally cannot resist a baked apple, so it was a lovely sweet round off to the meal. Now please award me worst vlogger of the year because I forgot to film any b-roll but mid-afternoon I had some toast with some delicious mountain cheese which delicious and for dinner I just raided my parents freezer and grilled some salmon accompanied by rice and broccoli from the farmer's market. Believe it or not, today I decided to mix things up and have cheese on my bread for breakfast. <laughs> This time my parents and I went on a little day trip, so we stopped for lunch at this restaurant on the side of the road and it really doesn't get any more authentic than this. A Portuguese meal traditionally always starts with a soup and look at that delicious broad bean and noodle soup. <laughs> for the main dish my father and I had the squid, lulas alagareiro. These oven roasted potatoes get me every time, they are incredible. And for dessert, my parents ordered molotov and chocolate mousse, two classics in any Portuguese restaurant menu. <laughs> and obviously, the meal always ends with an espresso. And here we are, welcome to the city of Coimbra. Coimbra is Portugal's most emblematic university city. Actually, the University of Coimbra is nearly as old as the University of Cambridge. Oui. 
we stopped at a coffee shop to try some of Coimbra's local sweets. It's quite impressive how us Portuguese were able to come up with so many desserts, all of which are basically just sugar and eggs, yet they're all quite different. My parents stopped at this shop window because they were intrigued by one of the cakes. So here's some of the other traditional Portuguese sweets. As I said, pretty much all sugar and eggs. <laughs> And to finish this week of eating, I think I ended it with the least traditional meal possible. I just shredded some mountain cheese on macaroni, but I was really craving macaroni. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. On my last day in Portugal after the holidays, I traveled to Lisbon to catch my flight. But before that, I really had to stop at my favorite place, the iconic Manteigueria. If you know Portugal, you've heard of pastéis de nata, of course. And this is my favorite place to have them. They're always being made, so you get them warm straight out of the oven. Whether you eat them straight with powdered sugar or cinnamon, it is a divine experience. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you enjoyed having a little glimpse of what it's like to live in Portugal, what we eat over there and our traditional foods. And I'm interested to know if you've had any of the foods that I showed apart from the pastel de nata because that's the one that everyone tries and I do agree, they are amazing. If you had any of the other foods, let me know in the comments. Whenever I go back, I can always make another video and show you more of it. I'm going to leave here my full playlist with food vlogs in other countries and here another video that you might enjoy. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.